Welcome back to our Ultron Case of the Month series. Feel free to comment below and I'll attempt to address any questions or concerns. This case was seen by the resident, Dr. Cortez, and her attending, Dr. Soriano. The case starts with a four-month-old female presenting secondary to the mother's concern about a right inguinal mass. The child had a history remarkable for a known inguinal hernia. In the past, the mother had easily reduced the known hernia. However, the mother was unable to reduce at home and thus presented with the child for evaluation. On evaluation, an area of swelling was noted in the inguinal region concerning for the known hernia. This area is slightly tender and not able to be reduced at bedside. Given the inability to easily reduce the suspected hernia, the team decided to image with ultrasound. While most hernias do not require ultrasound to aid in reduction, I like the idea of utilizing ultrasound to assist in identification of the hernia and potentially help locate the fascial defect. This was the first imaging obtained at bedside. The linear probe is utilized for the high resolution image. The operator subsequently fans the probe to help better visualize the area. The area of prominence on physical examination concerning for hernia was identified to be the cystic structure on ultrasound examination. This area was clearly above the bright echogenic fascial plane. Color Doppler was obtained given the cystic appearance of the structure. This color flow image did show evidence to suggest vascular flow to the structure. A still shot of this area clearly shows vascular flow to not only the structure but the stalkly nubti identified herniated mass. This final clip might best identify the cystic mass with evidence of herniation just above the fascial plane. The biggest question was what to do with these findings. The treating team was concerned about the slightly atypical presentation in such a young child. Additionally, there was concern that the suspected hernia did not appear consistent with a small piece of momentum or bowel given the amount of vascular flow and cystic appearance. Given this, a radiology performed ultrasound was obtained. That radiology study confirmed the team's suspicion of a more complex process and there was concern for herniation of the left ovary. Surgery was consulted to reduce the herniated ovary and the patient was taken for surgical repair the next day. I'll be the first to admit that the vast majority of straightforward hernias do not need imaging with ultrasound. However, in atypical or complex cases, the modality can provide helpful information. I personally have attempted to reduce a suspected hernia only to later uncover a more complex process. Our ability to differentiate structures with simple palpation is likely not as good as we think. This clip showed herniated bowel, which can be seen transversing the fascial defect. Ultrasound is helpful to clarify the presence of a hernia, but also the identification of the potential fascial defect that might help in reduction attempts, or in this case, utilizing an ultrasound probe to provide the pressure required for hernia reduction. Given Dr. Soriano's expertise as a pediatric emergency medicine physician, she was gracious enough to provide some pearls concerning this case. Herniation of the ovary can occur in 15-31% of cases in young girls. The risk factors associated with the condition are prematurity, low birth weight, age less than one year at presentation, and the hernia being unreducible at presentation. Flow is important to note in these cases because a lack of blood flow results in a more emergent and time-dependent process. While this patient was reduced and surgical repair was performed the next day, uncomplicated patients who are easily reduced with reliable parents can be discharged for repair as an outpatient. Involving the surgeons along with parental preference likely is the best course of action. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the case. Feel free to comment below.